Hi, I'm Luca, and welcome to this episode of Do It Right, Dynamic Hydronic Balancing. Today, we will continue to explore how to improve the performance of a hydronic distribution system by maintaining a particular focus on the interaction between pumps and valves, and especially what needs to be done during the commissioning phase. And there are a couple of things to double check when commissioning a pump in a hydronic distribution system. Let's consider a typical example of a variable flow system with two poor throttling valves. First of all, you need to discover the correct pump setting for the 100% load condition when all terminal units are open and they request maximum flow. In this condition, if the pump is properly designed, it should run at 80 to 100% capacity. And in order to do this, one must check the available differential pressure delivered by the pump in different parts of the system and especially make sure there is enough pressure available at the most remote terminal units. These parts are called the index circuits. And in case of too much pressure there, the pump maximum speed can be reduced and further adjustments can be made until an ideal setting is reached. Once the maximum pump setting is known, it should also be checked how to control the amount of flow which is running through the system during normal operation. And there are two ways to do this. Set of the R pumps are equipped with built in pressure sensors but they can also be connected to external differential pressure sensors, also called remote sensors, to have a better feeling of what is happening in the different parts of the system. Here, we can see the difference between a pump with a built-in pressure sensor on the left side and with a remote one on the right side. Obviously, these are two alternative but not equivalent methods to set up a control system with pumps and dynamic balancing valves. In fact, using a built-in sensor is a practical option because there is no electrical connection to move along the physical layout of the pipeline between the pump and the sensor. However, by doing this, you can only have knowledge of the available pressure across the pump and you lose understanding of the changing conditions in the rest of the system. And in this case, the pump speed will change according to its internal settings. For example, the device is always trying to maintain a certain pump head or providing a linear relationship between the pump head and the total flow rate of the distribution system. A far better solution would be to locate the pressure sensor where it is needed the most, which means installing near the remote terminal units with the first away from the pump which are the most likely candidates to suffer under flow and starvation conditions. In such a case, the pump is now getting a clearer understanding of the system conditions and can therefore better address any possible under or overflow conditions and therefore achieve higher energy saving and at the same time preserve the required comfort thanks to the optimal performance of the building. And where to exactly locate the sensors and how many of them are needed, it depends on the complexity of the hydronic distribution system and it is up to the HVAC designer to determine this. So to complete the picture, there is another important aspect to consider and to set up at the commissioning phase. And in order to protect the pump from running against a blind pipe, when the system is shutting off, a circulation bypass should be provided. However, we all know that whenever the fluid bypasses the terminal unit, then the energy is not used and goes back into the return pipeline, affecting the efficiency of the system. And therefore, the safety measure for the pump needs to be kept as reduced as possible. The best solution I would like to suggest is to use control bypasses, which open only when it's needed, and perhaps are even dynamically balanced to reduce the impact of the recirculating water on the delta T. Thank you for watching. Do it right. Dynamic hydronic balancing.